My name is Petr Meselgia and I was born in 1965 in former Yugoslavia, Serbia, in the city of Novi Sad. There is one question I am often confronted with, uh, a question that I many times ask myself and that I also got from, from the outside world and that's the difference between uh, fine art and illustrate commercial art, illustration art. And I was thinking about that for many years and uh, uh, also through my work I was also experiencing, experiencing the differences and similarities. And it is a tricky question. There are no sharp borders between these things, you know. You cannot divide them with one sharp line. But generally speaking, having in mind the nature of each of them, if we take for instance, a journalist and a good poet. And both of them, they get the same assignment. The journalist will give us a very specific explanation, you know, with all these details about that particular moment. The journalist is a commercial artist. I compare him to commercial artist. On the other side, we have a poet, a good poet. And he has got the same assignment. So what he is going to do? He is going to suggest. He is going. He is not going to talk about that particular moment, situation. You know, he is going to try to explain, to come to the essence, the source of all the, these kind of happenings before, now, and in the future. You know, he is going to approach that subject from that angle. This is fine artist. So the difference between the fine artist and the commercial artist is I see fine artist as a poet and I see a commercial artist as a journalist. A very good journalist. A very good journalist, of course. It's not a question of, of who is better, but it's a question of the nature of the approach to the subject. My uh, art career started uh, in 1981 when I published my first serious comic, comic series named Krampi, Krampi in uh, Stripoteca, which was at that time one of the uh, best uh, comic magazines in the country. And for the subsequent 10 years I was doing comics. Uh, but somewhere uh, at the beginning of, of the second part of the 80s I uh, started to be interested in, in, in painting when I entered uh, uh, Art Academy in uh, my native Novi Sad city. I got my first illustration assignment and it was a very little book uh, uh, which I did for a publisher from Slovenia. The title of the book uh, uh, was uh, Peter Enkorak and the English original uh, title is Jack One Step the book was written by Terry Jones from Monty Pythons and I did uh, I think nine illustrations and that was the beginning of my career as an illustrator while I was still at the Academy. It all lasted until 1991 when I left Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia and Serbia and emigrated to uh, the Netherlands and the year after that, in 1992, I stopped doing comics and dedicated myself only to painting and illustration. In 1993, I was lucky to get in contact with a, a big uh, Dutch uh, poster company. And from that moment, uh, and for the next uh, seven years, I created uh, about 120 posters and greeting cards for them. Uh, you know, the subjects were all the things which were selling at that time from teddy bears and silly rabbits uh, to clowns to uh, some, uh, you know, fantasy uh, s scenes and, and <clears throat> that kind of stuff. And that was a very important period uh, in my life and in my career because, first of all, I was able to earn relatively stable living by uh, doing posters and, and cards and secondly uh, uh, it was a, a, an important period uh, in terms of practice I learned a lot of things by doing that 
a lot of things about the, the business of commercial art. Uh, my insights in artistic insights deepened and also I developed my my painting technique. I remember thinking oh gee I would not be able to paint something only for myself. I really remember that and that, that, that thought struck me you know so at that time I had to you know uh, work with somebody else. I had to have an assignment and uh, uh, I have a collaboration. Uh, so that was necessary for me in order to express myself uh, optimally as an artist. But later on it changed. I start feeling, uh, uh, you know, a strong need to, uh, to do my own stuff, uh, to have more freedom, to experiment as, as you know, as much as I, as I wanted or needed to experiment. Besides, because I uh, left my homeland uh, because of the war, I couldn't go back, so I was missing my my family um, uh, and uh, being very uh, homesick, uh, and that started to to uh, you know to interfere uh, with my work. So I uh, had to create a kind of compensation in my life for that, and. Uh, so what I started to work on on my own interpretation of one of the most famous Serbian fairy tales, Baščelik, which I renamed in Stilbašo. And this project, which will take me 15 years to finish, was very important for me uh, <clears throat> emotionally, you know, to be able to cope with all these feelings of homesick and not being able to see my family uh, and at the same time it helped me to express myself artistically uh, more you know thorough and better than I was able to do that while doing posters of course I was not working on, on, on this project uh, all the time you know sometimes I there were breaks the, the longest of which were, took seven years but anyway I was living with that project for 15 years in the meantime I was also working on different projects and one of these projects was uh, uh, the book uh, uh, King Arthur and uh, Knights of the Round Table which I did for a publisher from Taiwan so I was working uh, six months day and night and in order to meet the deadline and because of that I got sick I uh, you know got some problems with my back and it was so frustrating uh, that I was uh, just not able to produce something which I was happy about. Uh, at, at the end of that period when I finished the project uh, it was not published immediately because of the uh, economic crisis that broke out in, in, in Asia at that moment so it was the publication of the book was postponed it for three years although I was you know <laughs> killing myself from this work uh, working day and night uh, so this spoiled uh, my pleasure which I you know was having while doing illustration so I got literally sick from illustration and I decided to quit illustration so I decided to keep on working on my book whenever I can and to focus more on on painting on fine art uh, painting which i did for a couple of years and this was also very important because i was entering a different field which later on i realized i needed in order to complete myself as an artist uh, so i was uh, uh, doing uh, almost exclusively uh, fine art paintings for the gallery market from 1999 till 2004 I think and then I got an assignment from Scholastic from New York and they asked me to do some book covers so I accepted that challenge and that brought me back to, to illustration after that I realized actually that I was not a fine artist I was not although I was enjoying that doing fine art <laughs> And I have learned a lot, you know, I expanded my, my uh, you know, abilities and my insights. Uh, 
but somehow I realized that my heart, you know, was more into illustration. So I was, that's what I thought, um, was able, more able to express my artistic personality more through illustration but with 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 all that knowledge which i collected you know while doing fine art so my illustration work after my uh, fine art uh, experience uh, changed a little bit you know so my illustrations uh, have become uh, i like to think more mature you know more serious and also I discovered my path after that. So by being away from illustration field for a couple of years, by doing something which was also which I also felt quite uh, close to, I just, after that experience, I realized what my path, professional path, artistic path is, what I have to do in order to express myself fully as a personality and also as an artist. And that's still illustration, but my own illustration. Uh, but after uh, that period of uh, doing uh, fine art, I kind of started to miss the challenge of, you know, having to, to answer to the requirements of a client. So probably I felt at that moment that I was not complete enough. I, I needed still that kind of experience, uh, you know, being forced to, to make, a, um, to listen to, to the wishes of somebody else and trying to visualize it. Uh, but now, uh, as I grow older, my urge to do only my things has increased. You know, I still like to do uh, collaborative uh, kind of work but I don't enjoy that much not because of limitations I'm just not able to produce something which I'm really 100% happy about so all the th almost all the things I do for when I when I do book covers or illustrate books uh, and all these kind of things which imply all these limitations I am almost never completely satisfied with that work and uh, so my conclusion is that I am not a very good uh, uh, commercial artist. I'm not a very good, you know, illustrator. People often ask me uh, what kind of work I prefer. Do I prefer to, ma to, to work on my personal project or do I prefer to work for, for publishers and doing collaborative work? I like to do both. I realize that that I'm entering a period of my life in which I have to do my own things. And in order to, to do it properly, I had to have all these experience, you know, from before. And through having that finite experience, through being busy, not with the subject I paint, but with the approach to that, that subject. So not not being so much uh, busy with, with uh, describing the things I want to paint, but to trying to, to sink, to dive a little bit deeper and to understand what is, is it the surface of the thing I want to talk about in my painting? Or is, this, is the surface only the reflection or, or emanation or something which is more important? And if the second thing is the truth, how do I get to that? Uh, you know, deeper level, and how do I express that? Through this kind of wrestling, you know, and uh, I, uh, I think, expanded some, uh, some uh, of my insights, or deepened some of my insights, which later on helped me to, to approach illustration in slightly different way, and it, 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 it helped me to, to complete myself as an, as an artist. I know now what I am doing, what, what I want to do, and, and, and I know now better what I don't want to do. I just need more ca courage, you know, to, to keep on in this way and have courage to just refuse assignments, which I feel cannot help me to, to, exp to keep on expressing these, you know, these conclusions about myself as a person as well as an artist. When I work on a painting, I 
always think about satisfying myself. I never, I almost never think about the viewer. Because I know when I satisfied myself, I've satisfied most of the viewers. And this cha I mean, this, this applies to, to, to my personal work. But it, this applies, this principle applies, or at least I try to apply it also to my commercial work as much as I'm able to, as much as they allow me to, to do that, you know. Uh, of course, it, it doesn't mean that I, I, I'm uh, not sensitive uh, for, for the, you know, the client. I have to, you know, take in consideration the expectations of my clients, you know. But that's more commercial work, you know. I always, always, you know, try to please the client, you know, but not so much through listening and, you know, what they want me to do but more through being even more genuine with what I do and trying to really please myself. Because uh, time and time again, I prove to myself that when I'm really happy about the results of my work, you know, most of the people are also, uh, you know, happy about that and like the painting and, and are impressed or inspired by that. So this is the, this is the fact. And... Uh, so yes, I, you might say that I'm quite egoistic, you know, when I'm working on my painting. But I think that most of the art is is, is like that. You you are making things for yourself. If you are a pure commercial artist, which, which I'm not, you probably have slightly or different approach to this issue, you know. And uh, it's it's definitely for every artist important for every artist to define, you know, uh, his own uh, or her own approach. But bottom line, I believe, is that every person, uh, especially artists, it's not easy to, to be happy and content in your life if you are not expressing yourself. You know, if you are trying to, to, to answer to the demands of the, of the outer world or please other people, and you can be very good in that, and you can benefit from that in many different ways, I believe bottom line is that unless you find a way to really express yourself fully and be aware of the fact that you are expressing yourself fully, you cannot be uh, completely satisfied about yourself, about your life, Whatever story you try to sell to yourself, you know, bottom line is unless you really find a way to express yourself fully, whatever that means in your case, fully, you cannot achieve that, you know, what we all search for, happiness, and be really content with what you do. And stand behind that and say, this is me, this is my work, and this is, this is more than that, this is me talking through my work. And that's the most important thing in my life. So it is personal, but I think that every artist has to think a little bit about that. Well, you know, who am I? Well, what do I do? Why I do why I create art? Is it only a job for me? You know, only a, a way to earn my, uh, you know, earn money and and, and pay my uh, bills and, and be able to live? Is that enough? If it is enough. Then you you should go you should go that way. But for most people, I think it's not enough. And that's what I think about it.